Hey gang, what's up man? I just wanted to do another ride here. I hope you don't mind my rambling when I ride my ADV 150. Uh, these are mostly like, like you've seen before. Just a lot of local jaunts around my neighborhood, uh, little township and city. Um, but I enjoy it. Like I said, I like getting out on this thing and just cruising around at the low speeds I do. Like my sweet spot I've mentioned many times is probably anywhere from, I don't know, 30 miles an hour to maybe 45, you know, um, and that's great because any more than that, honestly, you get a lot of wind, um, a lot of pressure on the chest and helmet when you start getting above 50 miles an hour, I would say. And to me, it's really not as enjoyable. Now, if I had a shield, like a taller shield, the one on here you see now is uh, the stock shield and it's it's designed to reflect the wind over the body um, over the helmet when they do these these uh, wind tunnel testing and I'm sure they do on all these um, especially Honda um, <clears throat> these shields are designed to, to just to carry the wind over your head or at least over your chest so it does help um, I've never ridden the bike without the shield on it that might be a good test actually huh just thought of that I could remove the shield and ride it and, and kind of do a video on the feedback. That's I just thought of that. Hey, um, but I've not done that yet. So, again, just riding around, you know, I like, honestly, what I like to do is like kind of like stuff like this. Just get on here and, and ride around at various low speeds and just check out the sights and, you know, go down these, you know, roads and, and stuff that I've never seen before. Like there's a little pond on the right. I mean, I've seen it before, but I like doing that kind of stuff, just exploring instead of going like, you know, 65 miles an hour on a highway and just being in with traffic. I don't think that's really enjoyable to me. I'd rather just, you know, check out the sights, in other words. But yeah, um, I had a good comment um, that someone wanted me to do a video on my um, video production, actually. So I, um, Lori, I believe it was, so I'm going to try to put something together. I'm already working on that and I don't want to go into great detail on it because it gets very technical when you start getting deep into the software which is pretty much at their own videos. So I'm just going to cover um, in my next video just a little highlight here. What I'm going to do is just kind of go over my process and I'll, I'll create the links um, below um, not in this video but my next video which will be how I do my audio and video for YouTube. Um, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, I don't want to get too ahead of myself here. That'll be a pretty informative video that I think a lot of you will enjoy because I know some of you are um, have mentioned before that you would like to do maybe your own YouTube channel. And why not? I mean, you got to remember there's billions, over a billion YouTube channels out there now. So everybody is becoming a YouTube creator. And if you want to make a living doing it, um, you may want to rethink that because trust me, I've wanted to do this for many, many years. And uh, I would like to do that, but it takes a long time and a lot of patience and a lot of, you know, just effort time-wise more than anything, putting it all together. Like these videos, these are a little easier because when I'm riding the bike, it's it's mostly just visual for you guys to see the ride, but I just ramble in the background because, you know, there's nothing that I have to kind of go over. Now, my, my other channel, the Honeydew Scott channel, those are a little bit more time consuming, I'm finding out, because they're very detailed. And you have to make sure that when you do the video, you know, you put, you splice them all together and, you know, that, that's where a good video editing software comes into play, um, which I'll cover in my next video. But for this, I like to do, I'm finding myself, I like to just do the ADV 150 videos probably more so than anything because, you know, I just get to freely talk and ramble without really focusing on, on the video itself. Because I just like to talk, as you can imagine, and you probably noticed that. So again, just going down the back roads, and you know, I wanted to kind of give some shout outs to some folks that I, I do honestly read every YouTube comment, and I respond to everyone that I can. So 
Um, I'll just go through a few here. I, I just like to get some shout outs to uh, um, the people out there that enjoy the videos. I think it's kind of cool that you guys take the time and energy to leave me comments and I do read every one of them like I said so let's see here I'm just gonna go down some recent ones I have for um, I don't know some of your names so I apologize because uh, some of you have names in your um, actual handle where other ones have just a uh, like Lunar Nighthawk for instance um, thank you sir I, I do appreciate and I know you have a lot of motorcycles and the reflex and the helix I'm not real um, familiar with those I've not really been a motorcycle guy my entire life I had a motorcycle like a I think it was a, Yam a Yamaha 500 back in the day when I was in my early 20s but I, so I'm not really and then it, it fouled plugs all the time because I learned later I bought it for like 900 bucks right off somebody didn't even know how to ride a bike at the time he delivered it to my house and then I could never keep the thing running because apparently the mechanic said that they he used to race it with the throttle wide open so anyway he had jets in it that would always foul because just city riding was it, the jet jets were made to run wide open all the time and i didn't know that so I, I had this thing in the shop like three different times and i was so frustrated with it and i guess that was just my bad experience with a motorcycle that i've never bought one again until i bought this adv 150. So thanks for Lunar Night Hawk, and um, I really do enjoy the videos. And you know, I guess being six foot tall, you should be fine as far as putting both both feet on the ground. See, I'm like like five eight, you know, if I stand up straight, and I have to tiptoe when I come to a red light. But I have plenty of stability. But being six foot tall or over, yeah, that that would be nice. I wish I had a longer inseam. Trust me, because the stability the stability would be a lot better for me okay uh, let me go through some other uh, yeah I had a video that I commented on the red light sensor that got a lot of feedback um, so I, I do appreciate you guys chiming in and, and talking about that but apparently these red light sensors or the traffic light sensors are um, not go they don't trigger it by weight and that that would kind of be hard to do so they'd have to have a scale and everything built into them. So I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm not an engineer and I don't install traffic light um, sensors. So I, I have no idea. But the feedback that I've received, people are saying it doesn't go by weight, but it more, more lies senses, I guess, metal or something. I don't know. Um, so we'll see. But a lot, a lot of good tips. And I do appreciate the feedback on the sensors. So you just it's just something I have to work around and... If, if my bike doesn't trigger the sensor, so be it. I'll wait till there's no traffic and treat it as a four-way stop like uh, many people have suggested. And then if a cop ever sees me, I'll just explain, you know, what maybe Danny, Danny said as far as, you know, the great write-up on um, the sensors and the, the Ohio Revised Code and all that. I don't think a cop would get that technical with me, but the, he'll probably just say, be careful if I do ever run a red light without, you know, um, but I'm sensible. I'm not going to do it. So thanks, Danny, for all the feedback on that. Uh, let me go through some other comments here. Mark, um, yeah, Mark, I appreciate the feedback and everything. Um, I think it would be fun to take an overnight trip too, like go camping with this thing. And um, I used to follow a guy on YouTube that always did the camping with the the, and had about two or three other guys with him. Um, Quasi Motar, I think. I don't know why I don't have the channel anymore, but he would go camping and I mean, my gosh, they would go all over the country. So that would be really cool, like just to take the scooters out and go camping and, and things like that. But anyway, thanks guys again for the uh, comments. I do read all of them, like I said, and what I'll do here is kind of shut up for a minute and let you guys enjoy the ride, but I'll be back shortly, okay?
Okay, welcome back. Hey, um, still going through the comments. I'm just gonna, um, I think in the future, because it's hard to keep track of all the comments, which is a great thing. I mean, it, it's I'm getting a lot of feedback from you guys and I do appreciate that. But I think what I might do is in future videos, um, may, maybe not try to in, include as many as I can because it gets a little, um, uh, it gets a little difficult because I do get a lot of comments, but um, so we'll just maybe focus on, you know, maybe one or two or three people per video and, and see how that goes. So I don't have to, um, I have so much time and effort put in the, into the videos anyway. Uh, it's hard to keep track of everything as you can imagine, but I did want to, one of them caught my eye here, um, Greg, who wrote, um, left a nice comment about, um, might be interested in, um, like sending a few pictures to me. So, you know, if I do, um, do another video, I can share with you guys what I think would be cool is kind of have like a little community where if you guys leave a comment or if you want to send me any, any photos or something of your rides of anything that like what you ride, whether it's an ADV 150 or some other scooter, I think that would be interesting. Um, and I can, I can like show them in the video, like just display some pictures, you know, and kind of show who they are. And that would be cool. I, I mean, Greg, that's a great idea. So, um, my email address that you, if anyone wants to send any information to me that I include in a video in the future, it should be under the video here or on my YouTube channel. When you go to the about section, there's a, a little box down there where you can click and it shows the email address. Um, and it should pop up. I've tested it myself. So you, you should be able to see that. If you can't, uh, it's Herman Studios at Gmail. So it's H E R R M A N N Studios at gmail.com. So just send anything you have to that email address. And then basically, I can take a look at it and I'll have to incorporate any photos um, into the videos and I can kind of discuss it a little bit. I think that, that would be a really cool idea. So thank you, Greg, for that. That is really neat. Um, I'm going through some videos, uh, videos. I'm going through some more comments here. Um, let's see if there's anything else that sticks out on me, uh, out to me here. But yeah, mo most of the, the recent comments were like about the, the uh, red light sensors. That, that seemed to be uh, a very huge topic out there. So um, kind of learn a little bit. I, I'm not researched it anymore, but um, you know, it's, it's probably something I should look into uh, just for my own knowledge. Like how do they install the sensors? You know, I'm sure there's a YouTube video on that too. Who knows? YouTube's pretty cool. I just search YouTube for everything. So with that said, um, I had another comment that some, that somebody said that I didn't mention how tall I am, but I, I've mentioned it in numerous videos. So, but I understand you guys can't read or you can't um, watch, I should say, every video that I put out there. But again, for those who are interested, I, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm about 5'7", between 5'8", depending on how straight I stand up and arch my back. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a shorter guy. Um, I used to be like 5'10 in high school, but you know, you get older and you shrink and I used to do a lot of bodybuilding and weightlifting and I think it compressed my spine. Who knows? It's just weird. I, I've lost literally like probably two or three inches on my height. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, I'm about five, I'd say 5'7 to be safe. And like I said, when I come to a stop on this scooter or motorbike, I call it, I have to, I, I pretty much use both feet and my toes like the tops of my shoes are touching the pavement so i can't put them like completely flat on the ground but i have enough stability where it's not a big deal like i said it, it's just fine but anyway i think anyone with a i think my inseam's like 29 inches if i buy jeans or something i have to buy a 29 and i won't mention the waist but my inseam's about 29 inches so um if i buy a i can get away with 30 you know, but if I start getting over 30 inches, like 32, then yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm walking on my, my jeans. So there's that. So anyway, uh, again, it, it's pretty cool. I like receiving all the comments and I'm just going through some older ones now to see, um, what other people comment on, but, uh, for the most part, oh, the engine oil. 
Yeah, the engine oil is, is I just stick with the Honda brand. I mean, it, if you want to start talking engine oil, uh, you're going to talk, you're, you're going to drive yourself crazy because there's so much debate on what type of oil to use in vehicles. I don't know. You know, I just stick with the Honda oil because I know it's engineered for specific reasons. And as long as you get a good four cycle uh, engine oil that is basically meant for these type of engines and you change it on a regular basis, you're not going to go wrong. What happens, it's the people that run in the problem is when you when you put oil in the thing and you run it 10,000 miles and you never pay attention to it. Yeah, then I'm sure engine oil does make kind of a difference. But if you're just changing oil on a, like, I'm going to change it like probably every season. You know, I'm not going to worry about the mileage. And, and since I ride my bike very, you know, sparingly, I, I don't put a lot of miles on this thing. I, only, I don't even have a thousand miles on this thing yet. So time is going to be the more contributing factor for me than anything. So if I change my oil like every spring, you know, it's probably overkill if I even did that I could probably go two springs and do it but it hey it's cheap enough it's so cheap to buy oil and there's no filter it's just a I'll do a video on this because I know um, someone wanted to see a video on me changing the oil and I agree I'm gonna make one on that the next time I change it so I will probably change the oil again in the spring so look forward to that video and I'm gonna do it right because I'll get uh, it was just hard I didn't have the gear to really get down under the bike and change the oil at the time and, and use both hands. So I kind of, I need like a little tripod where I can put the, the uh, GoPro camera like close to the ground and kind of point it up so you guys can see what I'm doing. I, I tried to put it <laughs> with my GoPro, uh, all the accessories I have for my GoPro. I only had like um, a chest mount and some like headband looking thing like a uh, that you put the, the camera on the forehead. You know, I look ridiculous if the neighbor saw me. So, but the problem with that is you, you'd almost have to lay on your stomach and, and look up at the, you know, it just didn't work out. So I need, needless to say, I need a little tripod. And then when I change my oil in, oil in the spring, I'll do a really nice video on that and get some close ups and, and things of that nature. So, um, yeah, with that said, be back shortly.
this area that I'm riding through now, it's called uh, Jungle Gems International Market. I don't know. I, I, I believe that's only here in Ohio. There's a few, maybe two or three uh, Jungle Gems. Um, and it's, it's an awesome place. They got all this unique stuff. Check this guy out here on the left. This guy is, um, you can't hear it in the video, obviously, but this guy was like yelling at me. He got pissed because I'm driving in a parking lot and he had the weight. I didn't like run into him or not even close. But some people are just freaking grumpy as hell. But yeah, I'm just riding. I'm going slow, like nine miles an hour. And, the, and he, you know what? why he got pissed off is because he had to stop. And he had to wait for me to go by. Boo-hoo, you know. Oh my gosh. People are just all oh, too self-centered, man. If, if they have to wait for another human being, that just like ruins their whole day. So I guess he was a little mad because the, the van in front of me obviously doesn't know where it's going, or the SUV, whatever that is, and it's going so slow. And then then he uh, saw me coming at the last minute because these bikes are so quiet, man. Nobody hears you. So then he had to stop in his tracks, and boy, I, he, you know, he cussed some obscenity. I'm like, really, dude? I mean, calm down. Go get some more alcohol or something, you know? Chill. But yeah, it's, it's funny. But this Jungle Gyms area, uh, Jungle Gyms it's called, um, they got unique stuff in there like if you want um, shark or octopus or you know they got all kind of just you know so a lot of people from uh, the different countries that live in this area uh, go to jungle gyms because the culture you know they have a lot of foods here at jungle gyms that fit their culture so you, you see some pretty interesting stuff this tram that you saw there um, that kind of has I think the idea when they first built jungle gyms um, it was gonna like you could park somewhere and then take the tram across the parking lot I think it's more of a not a functionable thing it never did function but I don't know if the guy ever had you know the idea to, to make it functionable one day but it's just been more of a visual appeal who knows I think it actually worked or did work at one time but it never uh, really never amounted to anything so I guess because of safety concerns and other things that the guy just whoever created this Jim something I don't know his last name but I believe that it never was a functioning thing but it looks cool so anyway back to the video um, yeah I'm not gonna uh, carry on too much longer here I know these videos can get uh, quite long so this one's already been over 30 minutes so again keep the comments coming I'll try to include um, some highlights on the comments that I get um, again the ideas that you guys are giving me is awesome I do like the idea that Lori gave about the um, kind of doing a video on my audio video process so that it kind of makes me um, believe that there's a uh, quite a few people out there that are interested in doing their own channel and you know I can tell you right now it does take some work but every time I create a video and then I see the output and I receive the comments that just motivates me to like know when to do more because it is time consuming and I have a day job and I got other responsibilities you know I'm rebuilding the car I'm doing all these other things and I'm trying to create a new channel that is more uh, centered around my actual projects at home and that's why I called it honeydew Scott because right I have this huge honeydew list that um, other people have too so I thought why not since I got to do this work anyway why not make it a little more enjoyable because I'm not really a guy that likes to do a lot of honeydew chores you know sometimes they're very uh, tedious sometimes they're aggravating but you know got to do shit in life anyway so why not create a video around it and maybe in the future it, it'll catch on I don't know I just like I, I think I I like using computers and the technology probably more so than anything else because I'm always been around computers and I used to be a graphics designer so I, I have a little bit of knowledge about um, certain things but I'm not an expert in anything if that makes sense but anyway I'll cut this short um, and I do want to thank you guys for time chiming in and keep them coming and we'll catch you another time and look forward to my next video which will be about my YouTube process It'll be kind of interesting. Thanks, guys.